Welcome to part two of the Vanderham Farms tour. Uh, today we're going to be focusing purely on their manure management system and they got a pretty neat setup at their farm, that is for sure. So Brian and Luke are going to continue to tour us around. And there's also another guy there from the actual digester company that explained the whole methane gas collection setup uh, to me and Brian as well. So that was pretty interesting to see. They start out by separating those manure solids for bedding and then they continue to process the liquid for methane gas collection and then eventually irrigating the field. So that's what we're gonna see in today's video. So we're out in the back where we manage all of our manure. Uh, like we said, each one of our lanes does have the flush. So the flush comes down this big alley. There's a pump over in the middle and then there's another one right here that brings it into this pit right here. So from this pit, it goes into one of the separators. Uh, this is our older separator, the one we can see right here. This is just the way that we manage it. We're able to uh, separate the solid manure from the liquid and then we're able to recycle that liquid manure to flush again. So all of that liquid does land into this pit right here and then it's sent into the separator. We'll go ahead and go to the separator right now and show you guys how it all works. Okay, so here we're at the separator. We'll go ahead and climb up right now to show you. But basically the liquid comes in through the pipes in the back and up and then um, there's a screen through where the solids stay on the screen and the liquid goes through the back part. And then there's two crimp rollers that uh, just squeeze as much liquid out of it as well. So we'll go ahead and go up right now and show you guys. Here you see all the liquid. No, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and then so all the solids are stuck on the screen in the front. So that's what you see here. And then these rollers here, that's what basically. And it's pretty dry too. It's a little moist, but. So here you can see how the water and all the fluid comes in and obviously the screen separates the solids you can see down here and the liquid just falls in the back like we showed you guys before. This here is something new. Uh, it's supposed to be an automatic cleaner because for the screens you are supposed to come and clean them once a day. So this robot will actually go uh, up and down and clean the screen. Huh. So yeah, that's all the liquid manure from the barn separated the solids out. They're gonna use the solids for bedding again, and then they'll continue to process that liquid, I guess. You guys can see we're pretty high off the ground right now. <laughs> yeah, so here in the back, you can see the sand lane. Um, the water, once it's been uh, squeezed and it gets all the solid manure out, goes into our digester. And uh, we just want as, uh, as little solid manure as possible in there. So uh, that's why we have the sand lane. Yeah, I think it's 200 foot uh, sand lane. And right there, uh, we get some more solid that we were able to separate from the liquid. So now we're way in the back of the dairy. This is where we keep our uh, solid manure that we use for bedding. Uh, as you can see here, they'll haul it out and then spread it out and then let it dry for a couple couple weeks right now it's the winter for us so it, it does take a little bit longer probably around the month or so to dry to the te to the consistency that we want it and then we'll go ahead and put them in piles like this and tarp it so it stays dry uh, those are probably some piles that we did this summer and the summer usually takes about a week or a couple days four to five days to dry and then the guys will just come with the loader and the scraper to make a big pile and pile it up so yeah, we use sand bedding but uh, if you can imagine how much sand you would need to bed up all the cows in this farm would be insane so this is a pretty cool, efficient way of bedding up cows in this farm. Just using dried manure. Pretty cool. Yeah, uh, sand bedding is a better bedding, but yeah, like you said, it's just way too much sand for our dairy. Yeah. And uh, if we could, we would switch over. But yeah, it's just not something that um, is really possible for us. Yeah. Okay, so here you can see the sand lane in the back. And uh, behind me is our digester. So um, as you may know, cows do pollute a lot. And one way that we combat that is by putting in a digester. Uh, we're able to trap all the methane, and this way um, it's purified, and we were able to use it in our households as well. 
So behind us here, you can see the little, um, we don't have a lot going on here just because we pipe it out to uh, a central hub where there's like about five other dairies that purify their gas. And then that connects into PG&E, which is our uh, a provider here in the Central Valley. They're able to pump it out to your house. Sweet. So is that then a replacement for natural gas? Yeah, Sweet. it is a natural gas. So their manure is basically also being used to heat homes and just whatever natural gas is used for, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you're able to use it on your stove and other household items, you know, that just burn gas. Uh, this way we're actually helping out the environment by not letting it go into the atmosphere and also just using a natural gas at your house. Sweet, two birds, one stone. Yeah, so um, uh, my name is Ryan. I'm one of the uh, remote operators with Mass Energy Works. Um, so we design and build digesters uh, for uh, a lot of dairy farms here in the valley. And, um, and then we partner a lot with uh, a lot of different other vendors um, to basically to produce RNG uh, out of uh, uh, dairy farm manure, so which is pretty cool. And so you guys have a little bit of walk through with the dairy process. And then so eventually manure water, after it gets separated from the solid, uh, it comes to this uh, big pond, basically like a ziplock bag <laughs> uh, with, with poop, right? So, uh, so we kind of have all the manure flowing uh, to this retention pond, and then it's gonna have, a, have an inlet and an outlet. So we get to gauge how fast and how quickly uh, uh, manures are moving in and out and also how long it's retaining inside the cover because we want to have a certain level of retention time to really capture all the gas uh, and for the bacteria to really produce all the gas that, that we could capture because we don't want to uh, send it back out while there's still gas to be captured so we don't want to move the manure too fast or or too slow but that based on weather and, um, and a lot of different other elements so um, and then eventually it gets produced gas and we have a thing called a skid pad there where Electro Innovation, one of our partners, builds uh, most of those stuff over there you see. And so gas comes through here with a blower uh, that will suck gas uh, from that skid pad. It will come through here and there's a, uh, that black tank right there is a, uh, a condensator so it captures the water so it drains down to a French drain and then it goes through the blower where there's a chiller that cools the gas as it goes through and then it also a uh, heat exchange unit that also cools the gas as it goes through that pipeline um, and so she runs through there and then that one last line uh, straight ahead that injects it to a pipeline that goes all the way to our gas treatment facility where it cleans all the gas uh, of uh, hydrogen sulfide CO2 um, and so then it would just uh, capture as much as uh, CH4 methane as possible. And then <laughs> across the fans over at our gas treatment facility, we inject it uh, right to PG&E in the pipeline. So um, yeah, all this process. Uh, so there's a lot of pipelines, miles, you know, throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the land, you can't see, but, uh, but they're there. Uh, but mm -hmm. it starts right here with the, with the dairy farm process. And then uh, somehow, you know, uh, we're able to discover that there's a lot of value to be captured with cow poop. So it's a really unique process that we're still innovating, trying to be better at this process, how we can really capture, uh, how to be efficient and how to be uh, maximize our, our production as, as well as our recovery of CH4 um, out of something that is going to go to waste. Uh, and so, yeah, and then we're still uh, able to use that uh, manure water after it comes out of the digester for irrigation water uh, so we're not really losing anything uh, for the for, for the farms and whatnot and as well as you still have fertilizing um, that came out of uh, separating the solid out of the, the uh, cow poop so yeah cool. any questions um uh, do you know yeah like what are some of the effects that's had on the atmosphere like what are the changes has there been any studies for that yet? Like, uh... Yeah, I don't know all the details, but I, I, but I do know that people have mentioned that it reduced the environment smell in this area in general, because we have so many digesters being built uh, down in the valley here. So it actually have reduced uh, uh, the smells. Pretty sturdy trampoline, so yeah. Okay, I'm doing it. What the heck? <laughs> 
I was explaining that that rain port right there. So sometimes in a low spot like this, when it rains, heavy rain, raining season, water just gathers. So we have you know some pumps in the water to pump the water out, or we can pump it straight back into the digester through those rain ports. And so this are weights right here. You see this chain. So so when pressure or gas start to build up, this is gonna kind of keep the weight down. So in uh, uh, keep some pressure on it. But then those chain will break as a safety when the pressure gets uh, too high at the overall cover but this will keep the gas kind of it moves around if yeah. it's your windy those gas uh, over there that looks like bubbles could move over here uh, so so yeah they, they move around and this are uh, the, what those are weights are for yeah so this is something new that we're looking into starting using our uh, recycling the manure water from the digester here on the side uh, just because we are very limited on water to irrigate our fields and uh, so this is something new that we're trying out. Here you can see the filter station. And then from there, it's gonna go into the reservoir and mix with also well water. So, I mean, it's gonna be a combination of both uh, manure water and well water to irrigate our fields. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so from, the, from the, uh, uh, the dairy operation, it goes through our separator process. And from the separator, it uh, filters out like any big particles. Uh, and then we also have a sand lane that the water free flows from to the digester that filters out any sand. Um, so then from the digester to this this pond here, um, we'll put manure water in. And then from the, the we have all those uh, sand media filters are called. And that sand filters out any particles uh, left over from the manure water. And then from the sand media filters, we will pump it in our field where we have a uh, drip tape. So every 33 inches, we have a row of drip tape in that whole field, and we'll be able to efficiently put um, manure water on. So um, yeah, so we should save probably about plus or minus 40% of our uh, of our water um, on that field efficiently. And um, yeah, it's just all about water savings and, um, and yeah, hopefully getting better yields also, so. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you guys thought that was as interesting as I did. We definitely don't have such a complete system here in Canada or not in Saskatchewan, maybe in Ontario and BC, but not where I'm from. So this was really cool to see. And I hope you guys check out the next video as well. We're gonna check out some of their pistachio fields, grape fields, and learn a bit about the crop side of the farming in California. So I hope to see you guys in that video. Also, do not forget to check out Brian's YouTube channel. He just started one and that's actually pretty sweet. So check that out. Thanks for watching guys.